Welcome to part 3 of the Koch Fractals in Unity tutorial by Pearplay. In the previous part we've created our entire gizmo system and in this part we are going to create the generator. But first of all I don't like to see this line renderer so I'm going to disable it and through the script of the line renderer we're going to enable it at start. So let's open up that script and we're going to type the line renderer dot enable is going to be true and let's also set up the world position so we're going to set line renderer dot use world space is going to be false and we're going to also set the line renderer dot its loop is always going to be true at start let's save that go back to unity and with that in place no matter what we select here when we start it up it will load the correct settings so with that in place let's go to the Koch generator script and create our generator Let's start underneath the initiator and we're going to type here a protected animation curve. And we're going to call this the generator. And because this is a protected, we're going to also serialize this field so we can see it in the inspector. And using an animation curve makes it very easy for us to create new different generators in the inspector. So let's save the script, go back to Unity and check out the animation curve and see how it works. So let's open up the animation curve. Uh, we'll create a new line here. And first of all, we're going to set all the values to zero. So this value is going to be zero, and this value is going to be zero as well. Let's select them both. And we're going to set their both tangents to linear. Now, this line from zero to one is going to be exactly this line, and this line, and this line, and all these lines that we have in our initiator. And on these lines, we want to create new shapes. So we'll create another key here. And we'll set this key to 0 0.33, which will be 1 third. Now let's create another key. And this key will be at half waypoint, so 0 0.5. And let's also create a key here. And we're going to set this key to be 0 0.66. Now let's put this key a bit more upwards so we'll set this value to 0 0.25 and now we've got this generator line here now what we want to create by script is that on each of these lines this line is going to replace this line so it should add in between these lines at a certain point uh, a new point here should be another point and then the center point should move upwards Hopefully this makes sense to you. We're going to write it now in the script. So the animation curve consists out of different keyframes. And we've also got a function that's called keyframe. So we're going to type a protected keyframe. And it's going to be a keyframe array. And we'll call this underscore keys. Now as we eventually want to do multiple generations, it's good to create an integer to keep on which generation count we're at. So we're going to type a protected integer and we'll call this the generation count. Now let's scroll a little bit down and we've already created a vector tree array of the positions and now we're also going to create target positions. So we'll type a protected vector tree array and this is going to be called the target position. And once we've done our generator, we can interpolate between the position and the target position. Now in the awake function, we're going to assign the lists and arrays. So I'll say here, we're going to assign lists and arrays. We've already done the position. So let's also do the target position it is going to be a new vector three. And this is also going to be the initiator point amount plus one. Now we've created the keyframe array here and we're going to fill this array with the number of keys in the animation curve. So let's say that keys is going to be the generator dot its keys. So now let's head over to Unity for a second and let's see what we need to do. So for each of these lines, we need to apply the generator to it and we will call each of these lines line segments. We need to create something that we can call this line segment and see its beginning positions, its ending position, 
the length of this line and the direction in which it will be going. So we're going to create a new struct for that. And we'll just type underneath the initiator a public struct. So a public struct and we'll call this struct a line segment. Let's open close this one. And this is just going to be our new container which contains a few different variables that we need to declare our line segment. And the first thing we need for our line segment is the start position. So let's create a public vector3 and we'll call this the start position and I'll use capitals here because this is inside of the struct so it doesn't really matter that to the global script and we need to do a get set on this so we'll say get set that's it now create a, another line and we'll call here a public vector 3 we need an end position and let's also do the get set I'll copy paste that now the next thing we need is a direction so another public vector 3 and we'll call this the direction and the last thing we need is the length of our line segment and right now the lines are all equal lengths but as we move on and create multiple generations the length will be different from each line so we're going to create a public float and we'll call this length get set and there we go now based on this line segment we can create a new list so underneath the position and target position we're going to create a private uh, list and the list is going to be containing a line segment and we'll call this line segment now as we're using a list we also need to declare that in the awake function so let's say that a line segment is going to be a new list of a line segment and now that we're done with the awake, we're going to create a new function that we can call to create any generation whenever we want. So let's go underneath the awake function and we're going to type here a protected void and we'll call this the Koch generator. This is going to be our main function of this script and we're going to input some different variables into this uh, function. And the first thing we need is an array of vector3 positions. So let's type a vector3 array and we will call this positions. And the second thing I'm going to add is a boolean and I'm going to call this outwards. And what this boolean will do is if this is set to true when we call this function then the generator will go outwards of the lines and if the boolean is set to false it will go inwards into the shape so we can specify some different results into that and we're going to add another and that's going to be a float and this will be the generator multiplier and what this will do is if we're going back to unity then we have set here the height to 0 0.25 but if we're adding to the multiplier then this height will be higher or lower so we can also differentiate between that in our function. So these values give us a little bit more control of the outcome of our generator. Let's open close that void. And now the first thing we need to do is create our line segments. So let me go back to the shape again and let's set this to a triangle so it's a bit easier to explain. So we've got here four points, the 0 0.1, 2, and the third is going to be going back to the zero again so we're going to ignore the last point of it and we need to get an array of three different line segments we need to get the start and end position the length of this line and also the direction of this line so we're going to go through all of the positions here and we'll start by clearing the list of line segments so we're sure that it's empty and we can start adding to the list so we're going to say that line segment dot clear. Now we're going to create a for loop to store all of the line segments into a list. So let's type a for loop for int i is zero, i is less than, and we're going to take the positions of the Koch generator. So positions array dot its length. 
minus 1 because the length is 4 right now but we only need three different line segments if we use triangle and I++. Now let's create a temporary line segment so we'll type line segment and we'll call this line is going to be a new line segment. Now we need to specify its start position, its end position, direction and length. Now let's start with the line.start position and that is going to be its current positions. So let's get positions and its current. Now its end position is going to be the positions plus one. So let's get the positions i plus one. Now if i is equal to the position length minus one then we want to set it to position zero. So we're going to add an if statement. If the i is equal to the positions dot length minus one, then we're going to do something and else we're going to do this statement. So let's do it around. So if it is the last position in the array, then we're going to set the line dot end position to the position array at zero. Now let's go underneath the if statement and we need to get the direction. So we're going to type line dot direction and to get the direction we'll subtract the end position from the start position and get its normalized factor back. So we're going to say the line dot end position minus the line dot start position dot its normalized value. And finally we also need to get the length. So we're going to say line dot length is going to be a factor three dot distance so we can get the distance from two points so dot distance and we want the distance from the line dot end position to the line dot start position now once all of this is done we're going to add this line to the line segment so we'll say line segment dot add and we're going to add the line. So this entire part is about creating lines, so creating line segments. And in the next block of code we're going to add the line segment points to i point array. And to do this we'll start by creating two temporarily lists of factor 3 positions of the current positions and the target positions. So we'll say a list of a vector 3 and we'll call this new pos and it's going to be a new list vector 3. There we go and we also need to create a list of a vector 3 and we'll call this one the target pos and it's going to be a, a new list of a vector tree as well. So now we'll create a for loop to go on each of these line segments and add their partitions to the new post and the target post. So we'll create a new for loop and it's going to be int i is zero again. i is less than the line segment dot count. So we're going through all of the line segments in the list and we're going to add one to the for loop. So first of all we can add the start position of this line segment we're on. So we can say that the new post list dot add and we're going to add the line segment of its current position and we'll get the start position of that. Let's copy paste this because we'll also add this one to the target post. Now inside this for loop we're going to add another for loop on which we will iterate through all the key points that we've created in our generator. So we'll say for int j is going to be 1 and we'll start at 1 because we've already applied the start position and we don't need the start position. Now we'll say j is less than the keys dot length 
and here we're going to say minus one as well because we're not using the end position as well because the end position is always at its zero point at the time of one and we're going to say j plus plus so we're going to iterate on all the keys that we've created in between of the start position and the end position of the line that we've got in the generator and the first thing we need is to know how far this new point has moved on this line so we're going to create a float and we'll call this move amount and it's going to be the line segment dot length because we already got the entire line segment length so we'll say line segment of its i position dot its length and that length we can multiply by the time of the key in the generator because the generator is going from 0 to 1 so let me show that quickly so we've got here the generator and this line is at 0 0.33 which is 33% uh, of the entire length of the line so we can use that percentage by multiplying it to the entire line length so we'll multiply this by the keys j dot its current time now we'll do the same with the height amount so we'll say float height amount is going to be the line segment i dot is length again and we'll multiply this by the keys j dot its value parentheses and we'll multiply this amount by the generator multiplier that we've got in this function so this height amount is going about this height so this key point is at 0 0.25 and that will be multiplied by the generator multiplier in our function so now let's create a vector tree point of where this point is going to be so we'll say vector tree and we'll call this move pos and that is going to be starting at the line segment i dot its start position plus between parentheses we're going to get the line segment dot its direction and we'll multiply that direction by the move amount now we've added in this function the boolean for outwards so we're going to apply this boolean in the script as well so we'll create a new vector three and we'll call this direction now let's create an if statement based on the boolean so we'll say if it's going to be outwards then we're going to do something and else we're going to do something else and let me show you what i'm going to do so we are on a line and we've got a certain direction so we'll get that direction and then we're going to say that if we're going outwards we're going to uh, rotate our direction by 90 degrees outwards or if we're not using it outwards we're going inwards so we're going to rotate 90 degrees to the other side of its current direction so that way it will either go into this direction or it will go inwards so here we're going to say that direction is going to be and we're using the quaternion dot angle axis which we've already used in the on draw gizmos so we're going to say quaternion dot angle axis and we'll use here minus 90 degrees because we're going outwards to the left and we want to rotate on its uh, rotate axis and we need to multiply this direction by its current line segment direction so we're going to multiply this by the line segment i dot direction now let's copy paste this into the else statement and here we're not going to use minus 90 but we're going to use just 90 now let's fill in the arrays so we're going to say that new pos dot add is going to add the move pos because we're just moving along on the line and the target positions are also going to take into account the height amount so we're going to say that target pos dot add is going to be the move pos plus between parentheses the direction multiplied by the height amount now outside of these two for loops we're still going to add to the new post and the target post the end positions so we'll say that new post dot add is going to be adding the line segment 
and we want to get the first line segment, so zero, the its start position. And we'll do the same with the target pos, so let's copy paste this again. Let's type here the target pos. And now we simply need to apply these two temporary lists of new pos and target pos to the array lists of position and target position. So first of all, we're going to set the position and the target position to the correct length. So we'll say that the position is going to be a new vector tree with the length of the new pos dot count. And we're also going to say that the target position is a new vector tree with the length of the target pos dot count. Now as we're dealing with arrays and lists we need to convert the list to an array. So we'll say that the position is now going to be a new pos dot to array and the target position is going to be the target pos dot to array. And once this is all done, we've done an entire generation, so we'll say that the generation count is going to be plus plus. And I've done a very silly thing, because I tried to save it and I got an error that this name, Koch Generator, is the same as this name, Koch Generator. And we can't do that. So we'll s change this to Koch Generate then. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity because this is done for all that we need to do in the Koch generator. Now that we're done with the Koch generate function we still need to call it somewhere so we're going to call this onto the line renderer. So let's go over to our line renderer script and we're going to add something to this to make it work. So we've created two lists of positions. We've got the positions list and we've got the target positions and in the line renderer I now want to lerp between the positions and the target positions. So I'm going to add here a public float and we'll call this the lerp amount. And This is just for testing and we'll add a new vector 3 array and we'll call these the lerp position. Now let's go to the update and let's bind the koch generate function to some keys that we can press to create different generations. So I'll create an if statement and we'll say that if input dot get key up is going to be the key code dot let's say O for outwards. If it's outwards then we're going to do something and let's copy paste this thing and let's also create it for the inwards. So we'll create the key I for inwards. And if we're pressing this key, then we want to run the koch generate. So we can call this koch generate function, and we've got the vector 3 position list, the boolean outwards, and the generator multiplier. So what we're going to input is the target positions. And because we're going outwards, we're going to use the true boolean, and we'll use a multiplier of 1 for now. Well, let's actually create a public float for that. So let's call a public float and we'll call this the generate multiplier. And let's put that up in here. And if we are using the I button, then we're going to use false here. Because we're going inwards. Now, once we've done the generation, we need to update the length of our lerp position vector array so let's type the lerp position is going to be a new vector tree with the length of position dot length we also need to update the length of the line renderer so we'll say that the line renderer dot position count is going to be the position dot length and the line renderer dot set its positions because we need to set the positions all at once and we're going to set the positions to position. Now I'm also going to reset the lerp amount to zero once we've done a new generation. So we can copy these things onto the other button. 
Now there is a slight problem with this because we haven't declared the target position in the generation 0 at the awake function of our Koch generator. So let's change that. So scroll to the awake function and underneath here we're going to say that the target position is going to be position. Let's save that and go back to the Koch line. Now there's one more thing we need to do in the update and that is to update the lure positions. So we're going to start with an if statement if the generation is not zero. So the generation count is not equal to zero. Uh, then we're going to update the lure positions because at start there are no lure positions because we've just got the initiator. So now we're going to do a for loop through all of the positions of the position length. Int i is zero i is less than the uh, position dot its length i plus plus and we're going to set the lerp position array that is locally here to a vector 3 dot lerp and we're going to lerp between the position array towards the target positions and we're going to lerp with the lerp amount. Now once this is all done outside the for loop but inside the if statement we're going to say that the line renderer though its positions so set positions are going to be equal to the lerp positions. Now as this lerp is going from 0 to 1, let's also declare that this public float lerp amount is going to be having a range between 0 and 1. And that should be everything for this script. So let's save this script and go back to Unity. We then get our generator multiplier here and the lerp amount. Let's set the generator multiplier to 1. Let's set the width of this to a little lower, so let's go to 0 0.2 and let's try out the script that we've just created. So there we've got our initiator and the lerp amount will not work yet, but if we are pressing the uh, O or I button, so I'll just press the O button now and I'll create an outwards generation. And that's the outward generation. It creates multiple points here on the position and we've got the target position. So now we can lerp in between of the position and the target position. I can just adjust this to any value and you can see that their positions are going to be adjusted. And now we can also go inside from this point on. So if I'll press I, it goes inside and you can see that something else is happening. It's going inside now. We can just change this shape to a, let's try an octagon. Uh, I'll just use the same generator for now. Let's do a multiplier to 3 outwards and press the O. So we're going outwards. And now let's go outwards with 10. Let's go crazy here. Another outwards. You can see some very weird stuff happening. And if we're now going inwards, uh, I'll set the size of the line again to 0 0.5 or something. And if we're going inwards now with another generation, you can see some very cool stuff happening here. So this is just applied to the line renderer, but we can apply this system of positions that we just created in the Koch generator to anything like trails or instantiating objects or creating a trail to walk on. So apologies for the lengthy part here, but hopefully you'll start to see the possibilities with these Koch fractals. In the next part, we'll add Bezier curves to the system, so it's going to be even more awesome. But for now, I want to thank you for following this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, leave a thumbs up or leave a comment. And to stay updated for new parts, subscribe to the channel. And obviously, creating these tutorials takes a lot of time and effort, so you can support me financially by becoming a patron on my Patreon. 
You'll then get access to many cool source code and extra content to download and enable me to keep creating cool tutorials.